the snowball activity is something that I would use either to start a lesson or to break up a lesson or maybe to finish a lesson. It's a really good way of covering a lot of different opinions on something. So you can sort of canvas an entire class's worth of opinions in quite a short amount of time. The first thing I'd do is have the class set up for discussion. So you'd have areas where people can sit and discuss and face each other and talk. I would organise them into pairs, probably not friendship pairs, just to try and uh, get them discussing the issue at hand. I would then either have up on the board a general question for the whole class or I would give each individual pair a different keyword or a different, slightly different piece of stimulus information and then I would give them two minutes maybe to initially talk about the issue that I've, I've asked them to. I'd have a timer up on the interactive whiteboard so they've got a, you know, a large visual mind of how long they've got to talk about something and that time limit usually sort of spurs them on to actually try and cover as much discussion as they can in the time and then I would stop them discussing, join them up into fours and then we would start the timer again for slightly longer and then after that we'd go to eights, sixteens and then hopefully a whole class discussion at the end. And you might not need to do the whole class session or you might need not to go to sixteens, you could always stop it at a four stage or an eight stage but there's no point in running a discussion activity if, you, if the kids have discussed everything that they possibly could and they've heard all of the different viewpoints that they possibly could. So knowing when to stop is, I think, a really useful skill. It doesn't have to involve a large amount of preparation. It just has to uh, involve sort of focused preparation. If you're doing a statement-based activity, you've got to think hard about your questions and you've got to make sure that it will generate some discussion or that it will generate some conflict because that's a better way to generate discussion between... Uh, to students and the important thing is to get them to justify it that's the part of the discussion that's the most valuable you can give them a whole list of keywords each and I want them to say you've got to get rid of two of them at your first discussion or say what's the most five most important and then the next time they go they will have to agree and say what are the five most important keywords and then you keep on and say what's the five most important keywords and the point is it's not really what the five most important ones is, is the discussion that they have to generate to get rid of the other ones. And then if you ask them at the end of activity, what were all the key words without looking at it, they will be able to tell you every single one of them. That sort of reduction activity works well with snowballing. I think the snowballing and discussion activities are good for students who have literacy needs or children who have English as a second language. That discussion and the repetition of keywords and hearing other people saying them um, they gain skills and they will gain practice in using the keywords in context and correctly in context because children are their own harshest critics if they mispronounce something I say no it's not that it's photosynthesis and they'll be very you know, adamant that things are pronounced correctly and things are used in the correct context.